wash them or just yeah, buy yeah, yeah. my yeah. trousers six quid from Tesco's. Yeah. So that's that's one of the thrills. Uh, well, it's me. Um, <laughs> and that's me. As well, it's, in it's September 2009. And how much did you weigh at this point? Um, that point specifically, 28 stone. 28 stone. Well, and I'm 27, 13 and a half, but I just exaggerate for dramatic purposes. And how much do you weigh now? Uh, just a tad over 14, 14 one, as of last week. Um, I didn't diet. <laughs> <laughs> food optimised. Uh, it's not really dieting, because I, I eat tons of food. Um, uh, but I joined Slimming World August 2009. I'd, basically, I'd had enough. I'd had enough of um, not being able to do loads of different things. I couldn't put my socks on, um, and and every morning there was that stress and humiliation of how I get dressed. Um, I lay awake, lay awake at night, thinking I just wish I could cut this fat out. I never would have done it. It was like a, a negative feeling, um, and then I had enough, and so I joined Slimming World. I was actually quite easy. So, were you um, from a child? Were you overweight? <sighs> no, not really. I mean, I was big. I'm because mm. I'm quite I'm, I'm quite tall. You might have noticed. And so um, it doesn't show. The weight didn't show and didn't show and didn't show. Because how tall are you? Six foot one. And how old are you? Uh, 45. So um, it didn't show, but how old were you when you started to kind of really notice it? Uh, probably um, when I was studying, I went to Tom College, Tom College, so uh, after school for three years. So and I got married halfway through. So the first bit with the food was quite meagre, so I actually was quite thin. Um, Got married, my wife's a fantastic cook, and then I started getting bigger. But I never weighed myself. I never cared about my weight or my appearance, really. And so I had no idea what I weighed, and it just crept up and crept up and crept up. And then I was bigger. You didn't do any exercise or anything. I actually did because I I take um, trips, Israel trips, to you know, like a hundred kids and climb mountains. I was getting into training before that, so I actually was. But it was only specific training to be able to do those trips. But I wasn't cog. I didn't think about exercise. I didn't think about exercise. I didn't think about the food. I was just lazy. I didn't think about the food that I ate either. So, so you made your old trousers. I made. I've, no, I made, I've took my old trousers. I've, got, I've made a hoop. I've got them in there. There's a hoop around them, so you can see the difference in size. I'm dressed up as myself. For Purim. For Purim. And what was the symbolism of doing that for Purim? Well, the idea is, is that sort of your idea of dressing up on Purim is about. Um, you hide behind a different personality. You have you have a mask, so your real personality can come out and do the things that you really want to do. So the idea of one personality hiding behind another personality was the idea of dressing up as me. But the other reason was it was also quite funny. And um, is the real you then the thin you or the fat you? Um, I hid behind the fat me. I was a teacher, um, been a Jewish studies teacher for 22 years now, and I used to do fat jokes before the kids did. And um, I think I hid behind that personality. Oh. I hid behind it. Um, and then um, I always wanted to, there was something in me, to be a teacher, to, well, to try and make a difference in people's lives. Um, when I, oops, ah, I think it's not flat, sorry. When I um, stopped being a teacher, I became a head of an education department. And, um, I missed the contact with people in their daily lives. And so that, that's the reason I wanted to become a single world consultant, was trying to get back to doing something, it being making a real difference. Um, and then having lost the weight, it gave me so much self-confidence to be able to do what I want to do. And I can stand up every week in group, and stand up every single week, standing up, that's a little pun there, every single week, and look people in the eye and say that, I'm, I'm so happy that I've got where I, where I want to get to, and my commitment to them is to try and help get them to where they want to get to as well. And that's what happens each week. You help people do the things in their life, make the change in their life that they want to, and it's really, it's gorgeous. It's just lovely to be able to do. Do you find that most of the people in your groups as a swimming world consultant are women or men? That's my group um, has the largest percentage of men in the country do it. The men that come in they often come with no preconception, so there, there may be less men coming in. When they do come in, they're often more successful because they don't come in with preconceptions about what they can achieve. Whereas the women have come in with loads of preconceptions about what they and loads of loads more baggage. And um, it was the, the, the rabbi and the, the emeritus rabbi, both very very senior people, 
and I remember standing up in front of this huge audience and making some pun about, you know, um, physically I can very easily fill this pulpit, but you know, spirit, whatever, you know, that, that, that I can't. It was, it was, it was an automatic thing. It was always going to be whatever joke it would be, an opening joke, it would always be a fat joke. Did your kids ever get teased for having a fat daddy? Fortunately, I was a popular teacher. That helped. So never, they, they told me never, ever, ever were they ever teased. So if you were a kind of fat and jolly person, that sort of fits a stereotype, doesn't it? Do you find you've become less jolly now you're thin? Um, no, I, beca I think um, I have become um, genuinely happy at the smallest things in life. So as an example, I was just saying before about uh, genuinely when I put my socks on each morning, I say a prayer that I can do that. It's only a very small thing, but it's the difference. It's each morning when I know that I'm healthy and I'm grateful for that is when I put my socks on. Or when I have, you know, I, can buy, I never have a problem having clothes that fit me, those type of things. Um, I, I, before, I never thought about my food. Now I really enjoy the taste of every single small thing that I have. Um, so when, you know, as a Jewish person, I say a blessing on an apple, glass of water I really mean it because I know what it's doing for me I'm just I'm, I'm happy to think about you know where that apple came from. Um, well I mean the, fir the first thing is that I'm, I'm, wear I'm just wary that if I was Simi was not a religious organization um, and I wouldn't want to give the impression that um, that what motivates Slimming World is um, re specific religious principles there are principle there are principles that I have which 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 when I walked to Slimming World are exactly the same and I connected. And I think people with religious values or none connect with those values. But leaving Slimming World out of the picture for a moment, how did your own right. religion okay. help you to achieve change? The first, the first emphasis was um, that you can, you can change, you have free will and you're an adult and you can choose. Um, my pr previously I had really flitted with some other form of weight loss which included some pills, the pills from the doctor which which will basically say to you, don't have free will. You, you cannot choose to stop eating less fat. I'll give you these pills, and if you carry on eating fat in your food, they will come out in a very messy, horrible way. You haven't got free will. Or I never really considered ga um, gastric, bariatric surgery because, again, it was like you don't have self-control. You cannot choose. You cannot change. But there was also a feeling that you couldn't. Then to really sort of wake up and feel, I can do this, I can change myself, I can be the person I want to be, was the initial start. There's a, there's a, a different there's a religious principle of it, in the idea the Bible says, hey, let us make man. The idea, why is it in the plural? That speaking to, God is speaking to, to man. Let us, we'll do it together, I'll give you the potential, and you do the rest. I've given you the raw materials, now you yeah. do the rest. And the, the, the idea that there is, there is often a feeling for many people, who walk in the door of a swimming club, a swimming world especially, there is a feeling of hopelessness, of nowhere else to turn, of not, not thinking they can achieve. And did you have those feelings? Well, as I, when I, every night when I laid, I laid awake before I went to sleep, of just feeling there is nothing I can, I wish I could change, I wish I could change this, but not then finding the catalyst to be able to make the change. It, it, in essence, there was a, a whole lot of things together. Um, again, the, the daily, daily humiliations that you tolerate, you begin to tolerate because they happen so slowly. And, you know, to do with, I go back to socks, and to do with um, the, the terror, and I, that may not be too strong a word to use, of walking down the street holding something in my hand. If I drop it, how will I be able to pick it up? Um, but all those things came together. And with this photograph, which was my before photograph of my son's wedding, um, which was, um, I sh I sh this smile, which is, a, is not a real smile. I mean, this is a real smile. Okay? Um, Standing there thinking I'm ruining their day because in the photographs, I, 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 well, any photograph I was, in, I, I was in was imbalanced, but also having the process of 20 minutes to put my socks on because no one could help me that morning, um, of thinking that they're going to zoom in on the suit, which is, which is threadbare because it's the biggest size for male order and it's, it's from a son's wedding the year before, they're going to see that the, the, there's like virtually patches on the elbow. Um, and also walking around the chuppah holding something in my hand and if I drop it, I will ruin their day. That's all I could think about. So I'll ruin their day. So it, it was really, I, I, I'd actually joined something well two weeks before, but, it, I, the, but the, the changes that I, I'd lost some weight, but I hadn't changed inside yet. And then um, it was this day and thoughts about this day and having to stand up, still doing fat jokes, 
the wedding was, was a catalyst to make me continue. It wasn't what made me go through the door, but it was the catalyst to make me continue.